Hi everyone, it's Neil here from the professional development team in Oxford University Press and we're very lucky to have Nina Lauder with us here today. So hi Nina. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, let me just introduce Nina. So Nina Lauder is a certified Oxford University teacher trainer and an ELT and CLIL expert who's been working in the field of education for decades. She works as a university professor, teacher, consultant and material writer and has handled tasks in over 30 countries. So she's co-authored books for the Think Do Learn series, the My Little Clue World series and has developed material for Oxford Flipped. She's also the co-author of the Explorers series, which is a top selling ELT course book with OUP. And she has a great website called ninalauder.com, which you should all go and take a look at. So great to have you here, Nina. Thank you um, for inviting me. Great. Yes. Well, we're going to talk to you today about learning situations and especially kind of focusing on one aspect of learning situations, which is critical thinking. So let's, let's start with a really simple question. What is critical thinking and why is it important? OK, well, let's see. Critical thinking is defined in a lot of different ways. It's quite a, a wide topic. But the main ideas behind critical thinking are these ideas of being able to form opinions about things, question things, uh, not being afraid of trial and error. You know, quite often in the education system, we find that students are taught to memorize and repeat and multiple choice tests. Critical thinking is sort of the opposite of that. Critical thinking is, is teaching kids skills about uh, how they can learn on their own, how they can learn together, uh, how they can take material and distinguish between fact and opinion, which is something very important in today's world. So I think critical thinking skills are key in education and that they are things that we should incorporate into our classrooms and to give the children the skills that quite often we expect them to just pick up, but sometimes we do need to give them a helping hand to learn how to be critical thinkers. Okay, so that leads me to, to another question then. So, you know, we need to incorporate these kind of things into class. So how, how can teachers do that? How can teachers work on critical thinking and, and kind of developing those skills for their learners? What kind of activities and, and principles should they follow? Right. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it, it's sort of just, this, like I said before, a little bit breaking away from traditional teaching methodologies giving the floor a bit more to the students. So, I mean, it can even be done in preschool classes with when we do these sort of circle time, you know, you can have the children even just working on things like KWL charts where they can figure out what they know, what they want to know, what they've learned. It can be done with older learners through the baits. It can be done through experiments. It can be done through project work. There are whole lots of different ways um, through problem solving tasks. So there are loads and loads of ways for students to work on their critical thinking skills. And if we sort of look at Bloom's taxonomy with the higher order thinking skills, again, this ties in with critical thinking, you know, when they're creating things, assessing things, evaluating things. Uh, these are all different ways of working on critical thinking in the classroom. OK, great. So you, you mentioned problem solving skills there and kind of coming back to like the broader topic of learning situations. How, how are, are kind of problem solving skills connected to, to learning situations? Yeah, problem solving skills are actually one of the key points in learning situations. So learning situations talk about context, talk about resources, talk about students working together in different ways. And they also emphasize the importance of students working on problem solving skills and especially problem solving skills that are related to their real world. So the idea in a learning situation is that students would be presented with a possible problem, I don't know, for example, uh, we need to redesign the school playground to have an area with uh, a garden to help the insects in our community. Uh, you know, how are we going to do it? So, so using real world situations, age appropriate situations, language appropriate situations, and then handing the problem over to the students to solve the problem or figure out the solution either individually in pairs or in groups. Okay, well, well, I mean, that sounds like a really open activity compared to like maybe traditional classroom kind of activities. How, yeah. can, how can teachers provide structures to this kind of task? Actually, any, any teacher who's worked on things like doing a project 
already have the tools and the ideas for how to structure learning situation tasks. So, you know, if we were doing the playground situation, well, just as you would do with a project, just as you would do with a more extended open task, you would provide the students with the language and structures they need. You would tell them the steps they can follow. You would give them maybe, I don't know, a little map of a playground that they could then fill in and color and share. So uh, again, providing scaffolding, some structures, some guidance for the students uh, will help them be able to carry out these more open-ended tasks. And again, as teachers, we also have to be prepared for trial and error. If these aren't situations that students are accustomed to, you know, I know in my own classes, when you sort of ask an open-ended question and different people give different answers, you might have one of the students saying, but what's the right answer? What's the right answer? You know, they're so conditioned to having these right, wrong, yes, no, true, false answers that sometimes even for the students, it, it can be frustrating to solve a problem, which can then be frustrating for us. But again, uh, we also as teachers have to become accustomed to trial and error to trying some new techniques, methodologies, and activities in class. If it works one day, great. Keep track of that. If it doesn't work, reflect on that and how can you improve? But again, I think the main thing is that just like when you're doing experiments or projects or class shows or making a video or doing ads or whatever you've probably done in your classroom anyway, just make sure they have the the clear steps to follow and clear guidelines to what they're going to be evaluated on how they're going to be evaluated and what you are expecting of them. So maybe showing them a little example of what you want or comparing a good and a bad final product so that okay. they can. So planning planning is essential in, 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 in learning situations. You yeah, said, well, planning is essential in teaching. In, in, in everything, yes, yeah. I guess. You, you said something very interesting there, actually. And you, you were talking about we're kind of moving away from, you know, right, wrong, black and white, two or four kind of, questions and, and answers. So I, I guess there's a sense in learning situations that, that uh, students should be kind of exploring the wrong answers and maybe, you know, exploring their mistakes. Is, is that, would totally. that be true? Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. And again, like we said before, it's really helping students to become comfortable with trial and error to become comfortable with maybe not being right. You know, it's not, it's not the end of the world. And again, I mean, when we say this, we're not, we're not saying completely, you know, cancel all questions that are display questions or you know children should never do true or false questions no they can be done it's just that that shouldn't be the only thing they're doing I think up until now quite often um, you know it really has just been fill in the gap match yes or no right or wrong for example especially on tests and exams when we're evaluating students and so this sort of learning situations and having a more open-ended approach to teaching can sort of help us veer away from only using those sorts of questions. So I think they can they can work together, okay. you know, to, to help the students develop academically, but also academic, uh, not only academically, but also socially, uh, you know, and become part of the community, part of the real world. Okay, so it's kind of, it's kind of we're moving away from this kind of kind of focus on like yes no factual kind of answers and maybe working more on kind of skill sets I think it was Piaget said something like you know intelligence is knowing what to do when you don't know what to do so is that kind of exactly. ethos of, of life skills what we're kind of trying to focus on totally yeah life skills and soft skills uh, again, like we mentioned before, just being comfortable asking questions, being comfortable being wrong, uh, knowing how to critique each other's work, knowing how to critique your own work, knowing how to say, well, I could have done better here. Uh, again, you know, we've had self evaluations in our books from, you know, time immemorial, but quite often teachers don't use them, don't know how to use them or don't know how to encourage students to really sit down, look at their own work and say, hmm might have done a bit better here or to critique one another's work you know so all of these things all of these soft skills working together knowing how to work alone knowing how to ask questions knowing how to give opinions knowing how to show respect and tolerance towards others you know these are skills that go way beyond the the sort of academic classroom setting and and really bring the students and their knowledge into the real world and their skills into the real world which again is is highly important in learning situations this real world connection. And so out in the real world, we're not asked true and false questions every time we leave the house. We're asked 
questions and we're presented with uh, everyday problems, you know, my shoelace is broken or someone stole my toy, you know, and those are the sorts of things we're trying to help students um, develop skills and abilities to, to face those everyday situations so that they become lifelong learners, uh, sort of curious about the world around them and not afraid to investigate on their own. Wow. Well, that, I mean, that all sounds really fantastic and really interesting. So thank you very much, Nina, for speaking with us today and sharing your ideas on, on critical thinking and, and learning situations as well. Great. Thank you, Neil. Pleasure to talk to you. OK, Take well, care, hopefully, everyone. yeah, hopefully we'll have you back again soon and we'll chat again. OK, fingers crossed. Bye bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.